We are so thrilled to be partnering with Hinge. Hinge is the dating app designed to be deleted. As you all know, I'm a huge Hinge advocate as I met my partner of almost three years on the app. Even before meeting him, Hinge was always my go-to app because I met more relationship-minded people here and had some great dates. Clearly, I haven't been on the app for a little while, but I re-downloaded it to check out some of the new features. One that stood out to me was the voice prompt, my best friend's take on why you should date me, where your friend can hype you up. Not only does this make the profile creation less daunting, but it's not always easy to see your own green flags. So to test it out, I asked UA some fun prompts to get her take on what I could put if I was dating again. So the first one, how long have we known each other? What was your first impression of me and how has that changed? Julie and I have known each other for almost 10 years. My first impression of Julie was that she's very social, but I've learned that she has a lot more depth to her beyond the social butterfly that she is. My next prompt, what do you think are my green flags? I would say she's deeply loyal. She believes in love, curious mindset, and she is fearlessly ambitious. And then last but not least, what kind of friend am I? Julie is the kind of friend who will always have your back, no matter what. Damn, that feels nice to hear. So download Hinge and try voice prompts today. Then find some one worth deleting the app for. I was so excited to get my shipment from Last Bottle Wines in the mail the other day full of incredible red wines all from Napa Valley. I love wine tasting, so having this to my door couldn't be happier. Also couldn't be more excited that today's episode is brought to you by Last Bottle Wines. If you don't know already, they're a Napa-based online wine shop with a twist. They offer just one hand-picked wine per day until it sells out, and they're always at incredible prices. We're talking talking 30 to 70% off retail. And the best part is that there's no subscriptions, no fees, and no minimum purchase. And I could not be more excited to bring this offer right now because they're having a marathon sale, which is coming up March 28th and 29th. Even better, we're offering Datable listeners 10% off your first order with code Datable. So if you are a wine lover like me, this is a great time to join. And did I mention that shipping is 100% free? So so what are you waiting for? Mark your calendar for March 28th and 29th or get on it earlier if you want. You can sign up at lastbottlewines.com and use code DATABLE and find out why Last Bottle is the most fun way to discover and buy amazing wine. The Dateable Podcast is an insider's look into modern dating that the Huffington Post calls one of the top 10 podcasts about love and sex. On each episode, we'll talk to real daters about everything from sex parties to sex droughts, date fails to diaper fetishes, and first moves to first loves. I'm your host, Yue Xu, former dating coach turned dating sociologist. You'll also hear from my co-host and producer, Julie Kraftchik, as we explore this crazy dateable world. Hey friends, welcome to another episode of the Dable Podcast where we dive into what is going on in modern dating and what are the things that we can change to make our experiences better. And one of those that we're diving into today is all about microwave relationships. And guess what? <laughs> we made up that term so we get credit, okay? <laughs> I was going to say, UA got really excited when she, this was your brain, Chad, I will give you credit, you texted me and you're like, I have the best name for today's episode. And many of us have had multiple microwave relationships. So we'll go into the whole definition in the episode, but I think of it just in short is it's like a micro relationship. Probably lasts between one and three months. I think the big difference between a turbo relationship is that you go through all the stages within that time period. So you're like meeting the friends and moving in together and all these crazy stuff that usually takes six months plus to start to develop, where I feel like the microwave relationship is usually it starts off pretty fast. Hence the, you know, putting it in the microwave, we're going to zap that relationship. And it seems to peter out pretty quickly within the one to three month. You usually go into these relationships being like, oh my God, I met someone. This is going to be it. I think I found my person. And then it starts to peter. And 
it's really hard to come back from these. Like I know I've had a lot of these. And while of course you want them to result in more, I think there's still relational experience that is beneficial. And, you know, hopefully when you actually have something that's the real deal, you can look back on them and see that they were almost training wheels. Another way to kind of think about this is even when you're in a long-term relationship, you're going through stages of many relationships with your partner too. Things Mm -hmm. change, you evolve. So we don't want to minimize microwave relationships because they they are the real deal. It's just that there are shorter periods of time. And you could have that with with multiple people throughout your lifetime. I'm going to relate this to <laughs> that movie, Marry Me, because I texted you, Julie, about this. I was like, <laughs> I, I can't believe I'm confessing to this, but I did watch Marry Me with J-Lo. Okay. Oh, right. I was like, did with, you text me this? I think I maybe just yes. chose to ignore that. Text. Yes. <laughs> With my parents, because I'm missing a good rom-com, and I love J-Lo, and she looks ridiculous for whatever 50-some years old that she is. The The movie is whatever. I think it got like 30% on Rotten Tomatoes or something. So it's not going to win any Oscars this year? I really hope that one day in our <laughs> lifetime, J-Lo will be up for an Oscar and it will be for a rom-com, okay? But she has made her entire career out of pop culture, shiny movies, shiny TV shows. She's very good at that. What I really liked about this movie was she plays this pop star in the movie. She, pay- she plays herself, okay? <laughs> and she's about to marry this other pop star who oh, ends God. up cheating on her. <laughs> But they were about to get married on live TV. Okay, this is oh, the premise is ridiculous. <laughs> so this is her th- the fourth marriage would be her fourth marriage. And then when she finds out that her the man cheated on her, she's on live television and she points to a random guy in the audience and is like, you, I'm going to marry you and ends up being Owen Wilson. OK, so this is this is ridiculous. I know I, we don't need to go any farther into the depth of this movie. But what I like about it is someone asked her, you're getting married for the fourth time. Like, why are you doing this again? Why do you Mm -hmm. do you still believe in love? And she she basically says everything will lead me to love. And these are Mm. all the stages of love. Mm -hmm. And she has this great song in the movie called Every Heartbreak Was a Yellow Brick Road. Mm. And the lyrics, Julie, I was like, this is really profound. So the lyrics are. And every heartbreak was a yellow brick road pointing me straight, just taking me home. I was never lost. I was just passing through. I was on my way to you. That is profound. And I think that's why microwave relationships can be good. I mean, clearly the Mm -hmm. heartbreak in Fallout is not always the best when you're in it. But I think if you didn't have much dating experience, for instance, you know, I think they couldn't be good stepping stones. They're like giving you a taste of a relationship and then it gets you ready for something a bit more serious. Yeah. And I think it's really great to think about it this way. Don't think about it's like time wasted or I met the wrong person at the wrong time. It's not about that. Every relationship you get into is the right person at the right time. Think about it that way. You know what's fascinating that just made me think about this was I feel like rom-coms set us up for microwave relationships because Mm. the whole thing is about, you know, the spark, this intense feeling of chemistry. And we go into this on the episode and we know we've talked to Logan Yuri uh, from Hinge about how she really hates the spark, the passion, hates the spark. And I think a lot of us are looking for a certain feeling. And oftentimes, this feeling that is on rom-coms of, you know, I meet this person and there's some obstacle I need to get over, but I'm wild about this person. And then once they finally get together, it cuts to the credits. I feel like if this was to actually play out in real life, it'd probably be a microwave relationship. It would probably last (laughs) two months, if even. And then it would just fizzle out, which is, I don't, I don't know, these hot and heavy, I'm always skeptical when they go so fast at the beginning. I feel like I've seen it happen way too often. I do think rom-coms are evolving. They're getting a little bit smarter and more relevant with the times. So in this yeah. movie, as <laughs> cheesy as it was, at one point, there was a very powerful moment in there where a reporter asks her why 
why did you choose him? And she's like, you know what? For so long, women have been on men's timelines. Mm -hmm. We're waiting for them. We're waiting for them to propose or waiting for them to ask me out. I'm taking that back. I want to be empowered to to pick the guy and Mm -hmm. keep my name and have him earn his keep. And I was like, yes. Yes, Yes, exactly. I think La La Land, that movie, Mm -hmm. I don't know if we describe that as a rom-com. I feel like it's more of a drama, but it's on the edge of both. Kind of, yeah. It's Mm -hmm. on the edge of both. I loved that movie. And the reason why is the ending of it. It basically was like the life they could have had together and how that wasn't what ended up happening because that wasn't reality. The reality Mm -hmm. was that he was married to his job, which is, you know, flashback to last week's episode for anyone that missed it. But it's the reality that, you know, even if you have the perfect seemingly love story, like love isn't an Instagram story. Like there's more to it that needs to go into it. And I feel like rom-coms never, they usually end with the person, the people getting together. They don't usually end with that even like life can't be compatible always. And I think that's what people wanted for so long. They want to hear the happy ending and just have it roll Mm -hmm. into the credits. But then remember that movie, what was it? Marriage, Marriage Story? No, Marriage. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the one with um, the guy from Girls. Adam was something. I forgot. Adam Driver. Adam yes. Driver. Yes. And yes. was it Scarlett Johansson in there? I can't remember. Oh my god! I'm gonna look this up. You keep talking. I'm gonna look this up. But what was it? It was like marriage. Um, it was depressing. Like yes. this is the one that they, you know, they just could not keep their marriage alive. Yes. Uh, depressing movies about marriage. Let me see. There was. There's been a few. <laughs> What happens when you Google depressing movies around weddings? What comes up? So many. And I know someone's like listening to this right now. Oh, it's called Marriage Story. Yeah. Adam Driver, Scarlett Johansson, Laura Dern. Okay. Yes. You're right. Yes. And it. I think that movie, why people felt like it was so groundbreaking was because it showed the ugly side of relationships and it wasn't about just getting together but kind of like the reality of what happens so did you like that movie i think it gave me too much anxiety i couldn't so okay so that's what i was gonna say i feel like from a critic perspective it was groundbreaking for what you just said I think it was too real for a movie because I feel like I came out of it and there was a lot of times that I'm like, oh, my God, this is just depressing. And it's the reality sometimes, but sometimes you do need an escape from the movie. Sometimes you need a little J-Lo getting married for the fourth time. You know, like there needs to be a little escapism. Yes. Like if when when it mirrors too much of reality... (laughs) You kind of are like, why am I even watching this? Because I'm just living right. this. <laughs> right. I feel like La La Land had a good balance because they gave you the romance at the beginning. Mm. And then they also showed how it was falling apart. And then at the end, they both got what they wanted. He was successful in his career. She had yep. met a more stable partner. And you were like, you were kind of bummed they didn't end up together. But you were also kind of happy that they lived this life. And I think there was even a moment of like her in the audience, like locking eyes with him which like ended the flashback Mm. series so i don't know i i like the realism component but i think that it could get on the verge of too real too yeah yeah do you remember that movie closer with julia roberts jude law natalie portman clive owen was basically about these couples that were like cheating on each other and hated each other yeah yeah i think this this was in 2004 and i think that movie was too ahead of its time because people were like this is too much too real but then marriage story came in you know recently and i think people want to i know this is going to sound really crazy but why we don't have robots that look like humans is because they actually made They had this study where they asked people, would you want a robot to look like a human? And people said, no, I don't want I don't want something that's supposed to be fantasy to look too much like reality. And I think movies Mm. really show that, too. It's like people don't want it to be that real. No. But yeah, it does get real after you end a microwave relationship. I think I'm glad that we went into this with Amir, who's our guest today. And, you know, we talked about this in the dating trauma episode, one of our most popular episodes Mm -hmm. with Janice a few seasons back. And these types of relationships are really brushed under the rug. 
they're almost seen as insignificant a lot of times because your friends and family be like, well, you guys weren't in a real relationship. Maybe you never defined the relationship. Maybe you didn't even have sex. Like there's so many, Mm. like you didn't do this. So it's not real, but it totally undermines the feelings of what happens when you, you almost get your hopes up that you've met someone amazing and that this life will begin. The credits will roll and it will continue and then it just stops. Yeah. And unfortunately, I hate that we minimize it. But the fortunate thing is whenever I've been in these microwave relationships, my takeaway is, wow, I can feel that way about someone. Yes. I have the capacity to have these feelings for someone. That's amazing because I can have that again with someone else. As long as you can learn from it and it doesn't keep happening over and over again. And I know for me, I remember this was actually at our event like that we did a long, long time ago. We did this event in person so long ago in a past life. (laughs) And I had this microwave relationship, I would call it. It was probably like a month or so, but I really thought like this was someone I was going to date. And he ended up ghosting me, which is how a lot of microwave relationships end. Sometimes, you know, there'll be there'll be some closure that the person says they're just done. But a lot Mm -hmm. of times it will be also a ghost. And I remember being really upset about this. But when we actually had our event, he was there randomly. And Mm -hmm. I didn't even remember his name. So I feel like it put in perspective that in the grand scheme of things, what can feel like the end of the world in the moment really ends up not being, especially Mm -hmm. when you meet someone that's a reciprocal, real, deep relationship that extends beyond the microwave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So did you ever figure out his name? No, I still don't know his name. (laughs) But yeah, that's that's the point of it, right? Is like, I think we always could put in perspective, okay, in five years, when I've met my person, will I even remember this person, you know? I just, I just really hope for us to get an email one of these days. <laughs> and the subject line is like, it's Tim. <laughs> that would be amazing. That would be amazing. If you uh, remember your name. I remember like where he worked, what he looks like. I have no idea what his name is. No idea. No. I used to keep a notebook of all the people that I either had something with or had a crush on. I used to keep a notebook of names because yeah. I didn't want to forget people's names. But then, yeah, I agree. Then it's like <laughs> at some point you're like, I don't, I don't care. But then anytime I talk about significant relationships I've had, these people don't even come up. Like in no, the moment, I felt no. like they were so important. And they never come up. I feel like I've had probably like 10 microwave relationships over the last mm-hmm. 10 years, but I don't even quantify them as relationship history anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is the hope. Hopefully, if you're in this pattern of feeling like you only have microwave relationships, one day someone will show you that all these people were insignificant. Ooh, ooh, related to our question yes. of today. Okay, let me pull this up. Someone wrote in and said, I can't seem to get past three months mm. when it comes to dating. What am I doing wrong? Am I approaching dating not in the right way? Mm. Yeah. These are kind of microwave relationships. We've seen this happen, especially today. Many of us go through these microwave relationships because that's just a nature of dating apps and just have us having all these choices and options out there. But if you listen to this episode, you'll see that these microwave relationships, the three months mark, like don't even think about it as a three month mark. Just think about that you've had these relationships and they're teaching you something along the way. And every time you come out of a relationship, it's always good to sit and think, what is the gift that was given to me? Even mm-hmm. if it was three three weeks, three months, three days, three hours, <laughs> someone gave you a gift in there. Think about the gift and how you can bring that into the next relationship. If it's what you're looking looking for it, that it's a long-term relationship past three months, I think it's really important to communicate that when you're mm-hmm. early dating to say, I'm looking for something with longevity here. Are you, you know, kind of looking for the same thing? You want to go with the flow, but at the same time, you have to set the mindset right from the beginning and not play the cool girl of like, hey, anything goes, whatever, you know, go right. with the flow. 
or the nice guy. Those two characters come out a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think timing is interesting because on one side, it's all arbitrary. If you're seeing someone for three months every day of the week, that's a lot different than if you're seeing them once every two weeks or once yeah. every month. We've heard from a lot of people that are like, yeah, I've been dating this person for three months and I saw them last month. It's like, yeah. okay, so you've gone out three times then or four times. Like, So I think the time piece, I would probably try to say, like, let's get away from holding that so near and dear as an indicator of the success of a relationship. So that's first thing. That being said, I do think there are some timelines that just are kind of baked into all of our heads. And mm. I think three months is one of them. And six months is another one. There's, oh, there's actually yeah. studies that, you know, if you make it past three months, there's a better chance chance that it will be an actual relationship. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of it is that people are not defining the relationships right away. People are dating multiple people at once. Maybe they're seeing you once a week or once every two weeks. And at the beginning, it's almost expected this day and age that you can do that. But I feel like around three months is usually when feelings start to get involved. Yep. And people start to be like, okay, like, do I want to actually pursue a relationship with this person? Or I'm not actually looking for a relationship. And it kind of seems like this person is and I probably should, you know, be the good person and let them go. So right. I think there's a reason why this comes up a lot. We hear this question all the time, like, I can't get past three months or three dates. Like, there's, there are these little arbitrary numbers that people make decision factors on. So that's one piece. I would say there's nothing wrong with you at all. I think a lot of daters struggle to get past three months. And even three dates is an accomplishment this day and age. And I think that the reality is that if you you might not get past three months with every person you're dating, there might be one or two, but those are going to be the significant relationships that you have. And I think you just haven't met that person yet. There's nothing wrong with you. All of these are stepping stones. The fact that you had a three month relationship with someone that you were excited about and that maybe felt like more than past relationships is a good step. It's amazing. On that yellow brick road, right? In that yeah. direction. So I think thinking about it less as there's something wrong with me. I've talked about this before. I did this exercise with my therapist that was like kind of getting to this root of this limiting belief, like I'm not a relationship person. And she had me look at my life and be like, was I actually trying to be in a relationship for all these mm -hmm. years? It wasn't that I was actively trying for 20 odd years and I couldn't do it. It was I was moving to a new city. I was focused on my career in that timeline. It's easy to say, oh, there's something wrong with me. I can't make it past three months. But how many times have you really even been in that position that it's a pattern? Right. You got this. Cool. You got this. <laughs> Slow cookers next. Microwave is just the first pass. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's an evolution of relationships. That's right. It's like s microwave, stovetop, pressure cooker, yeah. slow cooker. Fr <laughs> then you're frozen married. Di yeah. Frozen dinners. <laughs> Uh, well, I think that that's a good segue to announcements. Announcements this week, we'll say share this with a friend. We haven't said that in a bit, but I feel like we've all been in microwave relationships, whether it's to help someone out in their current state or maybe to help them see how far they've come. You know, even mm -hmm. if you are in a serious relationship now or you've been able to like get out of this pattern, this can be a good reminder of the progress you've made. Sometimes it's hard to see the progress we're making, especially if we're not at our end goal. But progress is always happening. So share this with a friend. Give us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Five stars, please. It really does help <laughs> us. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you in advance. And let's do a few messages from our sponsors. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Relationships take work, especially the most important one you have in your life, your relationship with yourself. A lot of us will drop anything to go help someone we care about. We'll go out of our way to treat other people well. But how often do we give ourselves the same treatment? So this month, BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you that you matter just as much as everyone else does. And therapy is a great way to make sure you show up for yourself. 
For me, therapy has been an eye-opening experience because I didn't realize how much I needed the support and tools to process my feelings. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and dateable listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash datable. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E. Okay, let's hear it from Amir about microwave relationships. I'm stoked because we're going to be talking about a topic that we have a term for. We're going to call this microwave relationships, okay? And <laughs> what are microwave relationships? Do you like that, Amir? <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. It describes yeah. it so yeah, well, right? Great. They're short, many relationships that are short but intense, and they kind of leave yes. with long-lasting effects. So kind of like a microwave, it's intense for however many minutes you put in there, things get heated up, and then once you take it out of the microwave, it's still hot, right? So it's, it's yeah, not like exactly. it's over. And then it cools down real fast. <laughs> then it cools down, yes. And maybe it tastes a little different than putting in the oven for two hours, but it still does the job <laughs> and it still leaves an impression. Yes. I'm liking this term more and more. But we are here to talk about microwave relationships that may last one to three months, but it's such an intense feeling that it could take some people years to get over. And maybe your relationship was defined, maybe it wasn't, but it has lasting impact. Amir, you're nodding yes, your head exactly. because you are you are here to talk <laughs> yeah, about totally exactly agreed, yes. this. Who is Amir? He's 31 years old, lives in New York City, been there for the past five years, originally from Turkey, mm -hmm. currently dating someone but haven't defined the relationship, but not the person that we will be talking about today or the relationship we'll be talking about today. So we are going to yep. focus our attention on uh, this microwave relationship you had and how it affected you. So let's start there. How Tell us about about the sure. story how did you first meet her dating apps <laughs> <laughs> so we match and then um we start talking we talk very briefly we like we text each other very briefly i feel like when you talk or you have a like kind of like phone conversation before going on a first date it creates some sort of expectation so before going on a date we just like i don't know what do you do for work what i do those kind of stuff and then i was like okay like this week i don't have that much to do like let's let's meet and then she was like okay and then going on a first date like i went with very little expectation so uh, when she walked in i was like oh my god like this is it like i i was like really mind blown so like when i saw her i was like oh my god and then like this is the one thing that you are attracted to person right and then when we start talking i was just like there is a chemistry like we kind of like similar things she was an artist like her painting was amazing i i'm architect so like kind of like the same thing what we do for our job the other thing is that like she really valued the family so like I feel like the it's really important for me too. So like the first date I was like, oh my god, like I think I find one. So mm, like I wow. was after the first date. After the first date, I was like pretty sure. Like I was like, oh my god, this is really <laughs> this might be the one. So I will just put my time and try to make it work. So it sounds like on the app you were definitely attracted, but maybe not to the level that when she walked through the yeah. door. Yep. Yep. And yep. but but when she walked through the door is pretty instant for you. Yeah. How did things progress? after this date did you feel like she felt the same chemistry you felt yeah i think so because like after she went back home she texted me she was like how great time she had and then she wanted to see me again that's what she said uh the next day we didn't meet we just texted each other and then we set up another date for the next day following day okay yeah going on a second date i think i made a mistake because like i said like let's let's go to like drive-in theater i feel like that's a mistake because you don't really make a connection Talk. when you watch right. my movie yeah that was like that was kind of a waste and then after still was like pretty okay i think like another like we didn't see each other the next day but like after the following day she was like why don't you come to my place i will cook for you so like every other day you guys were seeing each other the first yeah week. like i think in one week like we saw each other like four or five times kind of wow one one time like it was i think mother's day i was talking to my mom and i kind of like mentioned about her i was like mommy like i think i, I find someone <laughs> and then um 
the, I think my mistake was like telling her this. I shouldn't suppose to like, I think it was too early to say mm-hmm. something like this. Maybe like this make her a little bit like freak out. Maybe she was feeling like, oh my God, this guy going so intense. So like I recognized that and I was like, oh my God, like, okay, like Amy, like you do need to take a step back. So like, I don't really lose the control when I, when I'm dating with people. So like this, this time it was so different that like, I felt like I need help. I need wow. someone advice. So we like the good details. Were you guys intimate in this week? <laughs> <laughs> intimate? What do you mean by intimate? Well, however you want to interpret it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess like anything from holding hands to kissing to having sex. Like, yeah. where how, do you oh, all fall? how intimate were you? <laughs> okay. Like, so when she invited me to her place, I went, right? And then, like, she cooked, we eat dinner. She, like, her roommate was there and stuff. She was just like, leave me in the room. She goes to bed. And then she was just like, I have two options. I'm like, either I have to leave and then I have to stay. In that moment, I am kind of like freaking out. She never says, hey, like, let's go to bed or something like that. I don't know. Like, it's her place. I cannot say like, hey, like, let's go to bed. So when she gives me two options, I'm always confused. I don't know what to do. Like, I'm kind of freaking out. The first time this happened, I was just like, okay, I, I, I should leave. Get into my car. I start driving. Middle of the road. I was like, oh, my God. Like, she gave me an option to sleep with her. Why? I, what I am doing this. So I drive back. And then I went back to, like, her place. And then we that night we slept together. But, like, we did not have sex. We just kissed, hug, and that's it. The feeling that I have, like, too strong that, like, those, those things was kind of enough. I was just like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you yeah. were just feeling lucky to even kiss. Yeah. Was that your yeah. first kiss was in bed? No, I had relationship before. Oh, no, no. Yeah, with her. Was that your first kiss oh, with, with her, her in bed? I think first date we kissed. The first yeah, date. I think so, yeah. Okay. yeah, first date we kissed. Yeah. And then in the bed, we were just like hugging, cuddling and then just sleeping together. And then, um, so like I started to freak out. I was like, I need help. That's the time that I, I talked to one therapist. She did not give me great advice. <laughs> she, uh, one of the advice she was like, she told me that date with other people don't have one option. That's mm. the one thing that she said. Like don't put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. The other thing at that time, like I stopped seeing her, like I'm getting too intense that I'm freaking out. Like I, I deleted everything. So like, I was like, okay, like I need to clear my mind. I need to move on. That was the kind of like my mindset. But like talking to therapist, therapist also tell me that like she has interest on you. So like you should keep moving with this girl. Maybe it's going to turn on to be a great relationship. Okay, before we get into that. Okay, so you're Mm -hmm. dating, you're seeing each other four to five times a week. Mm -hmm. When did things take a turn that that didn't keep happening um like after after two weeks kind of like it start to like kind of fade away mm. so at that time like i i feel like i'm still at the same point the first day to two weeks i'm still in the same place maybe like she she's not i i don't want it to feel that way so like that's what i felt like i need the therapist after the first week, you you decided that you needed no no a two therapist. weeks two weeks yep. two weeks. Yep. So you were you were spiraling mm-hmm. a little bit during this time. At that point, why was it that your immediate go to was to go to a therapist versus talking to her about kind of what you're experiencing? Good question. I, like I did like I did brought this up. Like I was like, hey, like I am feeling something so intense. Where are you? And she was like. I am feeling something for you. I am definitely feeling, but like not as, as intense. So mm-hmm. when, when I hear this, like, I'm like, okay, I need to step back. So talking to therapists didn't really help. I feel the idea that she was like, Hey, like talk to other people like at that time. Now I am going on a date, spending my time spending with other people. And I'm talking about the same girl. <laughs> Like oh, a, on the dates you were talking about dates, her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. damn. Yeah. So, okay. So the girl said that she just was not, she was feeling something for you, but not the level of feeling you were feeling. Mm-hmm. Did she still want to hang out? Like, did you yep. still go on dates at this point? Mm-hmm. I mean, like this lasted like, I don't know, one and a half months or two months. So this is like still like we were still seeing each other during this time. Still four to five days a week or was no, it less? Like after a certain time, it started to like um, kind of like two times, one times a week. Mm. Like after I start dating with other people, putting my interest in other people, well, whenever we're kind of like I have free time, I'm just like, hey, like do you want to hang out this week? But like still my interest in the same person. You were the one decreasing the amount of time you were spending together. Is that what I'm hearing? Um, 
I am not sure about that. Like, I don't think I was the one. I feel like she she might be the one that like decreasing the time. It might be both of us then. Like, start to seeing each other less. I don't know. Well, it sounds like maybe you were reacting to her la- like lesser interest by then pulling back also, which, mm-hmm. you know, if both people start doing that, then that can explain why you start to see each other less and less. Yeah, like I, and also like, what do you guys feel like when somebody tells you like, hey, like I am feeling something for you, but like not at, at the same level, what would you do in that situation? Yeah, fair. I think I would feel defeated and probably mm-hmm. not try as hard because yes, I can't right? believe that my intensity is not met with their intensity. Yes. So I totally, yes. I can feel what you are feeling at that moment. So you said this mm-hmm. lasted about a month and a half. How did it end? How did it end? Um, I wanted to see her again. I was just like, hey, like, do you want to do you want to meet this week? And then she was like, hey, like, I think you are such a great guy. I had so much fun with you, but I don't think we should see each other again. And when I get that message, I was just like, I couldn't accept that. So like I called her mm. like I wanted to talk. So the first question I asked, I was like, how did you come to this point? What is the reason you came to that point? And she was just like, um, whatever you are feeling, I'm kind of like not at that level. And then it was like a very short uh, phone call. After the phone call, I really couldn't sleep that night. I was just like thinking everything again and again and again. I was just mm-hmm. like, what did I do or where did I do the mistake? Something mm-hmm. like that. After that, a couple of weeks later, I sent her flowers. I said that, like, I was just thinking about you. I hope you are doing great. Mm. And then she replied. She said, like, all the flowers are great. Thank you so much. After that, like, I went on another date. And then I was talking to this person. I I told her everything that I went through. So you were talking about her on the date with someone else. uh, Ouch. Yes, I know. So this person was like, like, you still have a feeling for this girl and she, every girl is looking something like this. I think you should be with this person. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, oh, gee, like, I feel like, like, I talked to her about everything, but I didn't really say everything, like all the details that I'm telling you guys right now. I feel like I didn't tell her. So like, I was like, okay, one last message and then I'm done. And then I did that. And then I sent the last message. I explained everything, like all the therapists, everything that I've been through. I just I just said that, like, I wish you the best. I think you are such a great person. Wait, so you like bared your soul through text message about all the stuff that you had been feeling for her. But then the end was, I wish you the best. Like you didn't give her an opportunity to reply. I mean, I didn't want it to hurt reply. Like, I feel like I wanted to move on too. Like, I, mm. f- I feel like I wanted to end this. That's why I, I said that, like, you are such a great person. Amazing. Like, all the time I spent with you was just amazing. That was it. Like, I didn't expect her to reply. What were you expecting with this message? Where, what were your intentions behind it? Just to let her know of these feelings that you had already communicated with her? Yes, yes. Like, I feel like I was going so, like, I was feeling something so intense that I just wanted to let her know. These are the feelings. These are what I've been through. And just letting you know. Like, I'm not expecting anything from you. But like, yeah, this is it. <laughs> and was there a reply? No. And Ooh. then uh, she did not, she didn't reply. Well, I'm assuming there was some goal of closure for you by sending that in a way. Yeah, like I wanted to really finish everything. I feel like if I didn't let her know, it will be always in my head like some sort of question. You could say everything that you felt like you've been through, but like you didn't do that. That's the biggest reason why I did that. And was that the last time you communicated with her? Yep. Mm -hmm. Wow, big sigh. (laughs) How long ago is this that? this point like how many months have now passed i think it's now like six months okay so first couple months i was i was trying to still find an answer like what i did that caused Mm -hmm. this so that was my intention going on a date now like it's totally different now if i go on a date it's like i'm just looking for the same feeling Mm. that's what it changed in my perspective so you're looking for the same feeling you had with her. The same feeling, yes. I was so sure about everything. I don't think I was I was ever felt that way. And what was your like relationship experience before this? Like had you had a lot of relationships or dated a lot or was this very new? I mean dated a lot, yes. And then also like I had like four years relationship. Okay. And, and it was not this intense. Nope. No, never ever. Interesting. Because sometimes it's just like there's no experience, right? But it sounds like that isn't the case here. 
Yes. It's, it's your first time feeling this intensity in a relationship. And it just felt like everything was so right. Like she is the one. That was the first time you ever felt something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. So for for a few months after, you weren't feeling great, still trying to chase that intensity. And then what shifted your mindset and experience into now being in a new relationship? It's just so tiring. You can't you can keep going on a date and talking about someone else. I know that that's not right. At that time, I really wanted to find an answer so I can really move on. It wasn't really a relationship. So like, that's the thing. Like, I, I, I felt like if I spent, I don't know, a year or something, it will take me such a long time to like kind of move on. So when you wrote into us, you shared that it was hard to date because you just were constantly comparing her to everyone else. How yes. did you kind of move forward with this, with the current person you're dating? Like, how did you stop comparing her to everyone? How did I stop? Um... Or do you still do that? <laughs> <laughs> like, I think sometimes, yes. Sometimes, like, I'm just imagining maybe if this was if this was her, maybe, like, it wouldn't be much better. Sometimes I think about that. So it, she came back into your life now and said, I thought about things. <sighs> I think I'm ready oh to give God. this another. Do you re? I'm sure you replay this scenario in your head all the time. I do. I what do. would you do? I would do, you just yes. drop everything for her again? Mm, I don't know. I, I maybe I don't know. I mean, that doesn't seem right. There is a lot of time passed, and when something doesn't work, it's not gonna work. Like if you give a second chance, like I don't think it's gonna work. So, but in my head, like if I if I see her again, I will definitely take a chance to talk to her and see what happens. Do you think she's somehow getting in the way of you defining the relationship with the current person you're seeing? Um, maybe yes. <laughs> It might be. In what way? Yeah. Like, I feel like I am really comparing it. That was a, like, so intense feeling that, like, I don't know, like, every time I spend with another person, I'm kind of comparing, is it the same feeling? Mm. That's the thing. In that way, like, I'm, I'm really comparing with, like, most of the people that I see with. How long have you been in this current one? I feel like, like, two weeks or something. Okay, oh, okay. So pretty yeah, new. Yeah, this is very new. Pretty new, yeah. Well, I don't want to completely dissect your situation, but it does sound <laughs> like there's still a heaviness to what you're experiencing and you haven't fully let go, which we've, that's not a secret. But maybe we can talk more generally about why these microwave relationships can leave such a lasting impact and why it's so hard to move from them. And sometimes mm -hmm. in your situation, I'd love to hear from you, Amir. Is mm -hmm. it a, her or is it just the timing or the serendipity of you two being brought together? Like, is it specifically about her or is it about the two of you together? I think it's about her. Really? I think so. Before I met her, like, I've been, like, many dates. I have never, ever felt that, that, that way with, like, any person that just walked into the room. So it was definitely her. I mean, I can just speak to my own experience. Obviously, every experience is yeah. slightly different. But we've all been in these microwave relationships. And I feel like they always start off really hot and fast. So what yeah. you said about seeing each other the four to five times a week, mm -hmm. it's actually the opposite of a healthy growing relationship. Right, where you start to see each other more and more, you often mm -hmm. have to see each other less and less until mm -hmm. you're getting breadcrumbed essentially. You're getting just the scraps of this relationship. And I have definitely been there myself. And I think a big piece of what makes these difficult is twofold. One is that you're in love with this fantasy of this person because mm -hmm. you truly just don't know them well enough. Like even if you have spent a lot of time with them, you're in love with this fantasy, the idea of them. And I think that's what actually makes them so difficult to get past is because there's mm -hmm. so much unrecognized opportunity. There's this whole yeah. life that you thought you could have with them or all these things that you could experience and do together. None of them panned out essentially. So yeah. you're you're kind of grasping onto this hope of not just losing this person, but the life that you could have had with them. I've seen yes. this before that sometimes people actually can struggle less coming out of relationships that are, you know, two 
three, four, five plus years. Ten. Because, ten years. Yeah, exactly. Because they kind of have mentally decompressed already from it. And they've also mm. seen it out and they say, okay, this isn't the right fit for me because of X, Y, and Z. Where these yeah. microwave relationships, we're just imagining that it's going to be the way we thought it would be. Yes. And we yeah, don't feel exactly. like, yeah, like we don't feel like we actually got to see it out. It's almost like you kept using really interesting language of like, what did I do wrong? Instead of just mm-hmm. this wasn't the right fit and i think with these types of relationships a lot of times because there's so much that's left unanswered because we weren't in a real relationship with this person there Mm -hmm. was no real communication so it's all in your mind you're basically having like a one-way relationship and that turns into self-blame yes i i totally agree with that um like I feel like maybe like if we spend I don't know a year together this is totally this is going to be a totally different experience than like a month experience that I had or like two month experience that I had with her. Yeah, or you get taken off guard. I've had really hard breakups when I didn't see it coming. When it felt mm-hmm. like everything was going really great and you mentioned too that you felt this intense feeling and you almost assume the other person also feels the same yeah. intense feeling you do, but the reality is you have no idea how they're feeling. Like, just because yeah, you feel it doesn't mean that they feel they it feel too. It. Yes. Yeah. But it's yeah. hard to bring that apart. Uh, the other thing I'll add of the why I think these are difficult, we talked about this in the dating trauma episode from a while ago. It's mm-hmm. almost like you're told that you shouldn't be sad about these types of relationships that only lasted Mm. a few months that weren't really defined because Mm. just move on you know it wasn't a real relationship but I almost feel like that shame and then just like what did I do wrong shame like all of that kind of compounds how difficult it is to get over because you don't have an outlet to just tell like be like no this actually hurt me in what way yeah yeah it's it's the delusion of the relationship that really hurts us The delusion comes from fantasizing about what could be. Mm -hmm. And you already have this robust relationship in your mind. And you're just trying to convince her to get on the same page. Like, do you not see our future together? But ultimately, (laughs) and I've talked about my microwave relationship in New York. It was two and a half months. (laughs) I've talked about this a lot. What really Mm -hmm. broke the delusion for me was my mom said, can you imagine being in a long-term relationship with this person and having him do the exact same things right now, which was not reciprocating, not being communicative, and also not being on the same page. Like right now, he may say he doesn't feel the same feelings for you. But can you imagine a year from now, he still says the same thing? Is that a sustainable relationship? It is not. So that broke the delusion for me. And Mm -hmm. the other delusion of all of this is that for these microwave relationships, we walk away thinking, I haven't convinced this person that I am the Mm -hmm. perfect person for them yet. Mm -hmm. I must show them all the different sides of me. And did they know that I also did this and I have these accomplishments and I'm willing to do this? But Mm -hmm. then you have to sit back and think the right person does not need to be convinced. They just know that you are the one and they accept you for Mm -hmm. who you are in this moment in time. Mm -hmm. You start spiraling for the months after the microwave. You start spiraling Mm -hmm. because like, oh my gosh, I didn't tell her this yet. And I need to tell her this. And I (laughs) need to convince her her this. this, She'd be into me. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, Yes, I think I totally agree. Let's hold that thought for a few messages. This episode is sponsored by Via. We all know there are things that can help set the mood in the bedroom, but did you know a little THC could also do that? Yes, Via has developed a unique blend of pleasure-enhancing cannabinoids, libido-strengthening herbs, and a low dose of THC all into one mind-blowing gummy called High Love. This gummy, wow, it will awaken your senses, increase blood flow, and intensify any sexual experience. I've been pleasantly surprised by the High Love gummies because it is just the right amount of THC for me to have a good time without feeling sleepy. And hey, if THC is not your thing, Via also offers a wide array of other gummies without it. And everything legally ships in 50 states with discreet packaging directly to your door. So if you're over 21, you can get 15% off and a free pack 
stock of award-winning Dreams THC plus CBN sleep gummies with our exclusive code DATEABLE at viahemp.com. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Let the gummies work their magic. Head to viahemp.com and use the code DATEABLE to receive 15% off and one free sample of their sleepy dream gummies. That's viahemp.com and use the code D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E at checkout. Take your passion and pleasure to a whole new level with high love from Via Hemp. As you know, I recently left my corporate job and I've been in total recovery mode all about self-care. One of my new routines is the nighttime shower before bed. There's just something about washing away the day and that reflection that's been super helpful for me. I've been using one of our partners, Osea's Mega Moisture Duo. This combo body oil and body lotion are so freaking incredible. It literally feels like I'm at a spa. I realize that the secret is seaweed and other skin level ingredients that are normally reserved for face products. And that's why I was so excited when Osea became one of our partners. And, you know, we're so grateful for partners like this because one, they keep the show going, but they're also super good for all of our listeners and for our own well-being. So if you want to have that nighttime bliss like I am doing, you can get 10% off your first order site-wide with code DATEABLE at oseamalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order and free shipping on orders over $60. So head to oseamalibu.com and use the code DATEABLE for 10% off. Let us know which products you end up going with. Share them in social. Super excited to see what you end up choosing. This episode is made possible by Badlands Pets. As you all know, Mojo, my precious baby, is the reason why I found love in the first place. He made me feel love again. So I would do anything to ensure his health and longevity. And actress Katherine Heigl, and I have that in common, she's helped save over 16,000 dogs through her foundation. And after doing a ton of research, she feels there's one place we can look to to improve any dog's health, and that's their food. So fortunately, she found that just by adding a few special superfoods to her dog's food, she saw huge transformations in their health. So she's made a 20-minute video explaining step-by-step how anyone can do the same thing to see incredible changes in their dog's health. I've definitely re-looked at what I'm feeding Mojo and making sure that hey, he only has one life to live and I want to make sure it's the best damn life. So if you want to keep your dog healthy and happy, go to badlandsfood.com slash dateable and watch Catherine's video right now. Again, that's B-A-D-L-A-N-D-S-F-O-O-D.com slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E. I want to talk about the spark because we know we've talked to Logan Yuri about this. She says, fuck mm-hmm. the spark. She believes that that is actually the most detrimental sign of a relationship. And, you know, I'm mixed on this one. I think there needs to be some pull, but I also agree that sometimes these people where we have the strongest feelings for, or they seem like the most charismatic person in the room or the most engaging or mm-hmm. all the things that make you drawn to someone don't mm-hmm. always correlate to the the characteristics that matter in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Some of the unsexy characteristics are things that sometimes we can find boring. I guess Mm -hmm. I'd love to just kind of go around and get people's thoughts on the spark feeling. And do we think that it is possible or do we think it really is just kind of a filler for maybe an illusion of not a real relationship? Mm -hmm. The, The thing is that this spark, right, it makes me compare with like everybody. Mm-hmm. Like, the, it's like, am I going to feel this way again? Because like, right. I feel like that was like such a right feeling. That was such a strong feeling that like, I want to feel it that way with the person that I'm going to um, build a family with or something like that. So you said that your mom said, can you imagine being in a relationship with this person? And I think she's like totally right. I agree with that. But like, like it was such a big spark that like, I feel like I'm still comparing with like other people. And how can I pass this? Well, I think why Logan says fuck the spark, because the spark is not long lasting. It's not sustainable. It's something that comes from this world of unknown. I'm interested in this person because they're so mysterious. There's so much I don't know about them. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. what is interesting that we can map to every subsequent relationship we get in is what is the feeling I want to feel around this person? And this is why I ask mm-hmm. the question, is it about her or is it about your dynamic together? If it's purely mm-hmm. about the other person, 
that is a superficial mm-hmm. spark. And a lot of times that spark comes from being very attracted to someone physically. And then all of a sudden, everything mm-hmm. they do is attractive because you're like, oh my gosh. And then she's also an oh, artist yes. and she's also this and oh, her, her family is <laughs> yeah. great, right? Everything yeah. adds on because yes. your, your brain, yeah. again, is trying to convince you why this person is the one. That's all yes. on her. If the chemistry is between two people, how do I want my partner to feel to make me feel when I'm around them? That you can map to every relationship because that is real. I feel safe, desired. I feel comfortable. I feel content. I feel sexy. Those are tangible feelings that override the spark. I see. Okay. I think a piece of it too is... I've definitely been here before is that someone brought out a side of me that I really liked that I'm like, Oh, I saw myself in a way that I haven't before. They Mm. saw this in me. And I think Mm. what that really is, is a deeper call to how can you activate that more in yourself? And that doesn't Mm. actually need any partner to do that. You don't need this girl. You can just take some of the dynamics between the two of you and how Mm. can you fulfill that? So then when you meet someone else, you'll start to feel that too. The Mm -hmm. other thing to add here is you definitely want to create this spark. I keep hearing it when you speak of when you first met, but Mm -hmm. then let's talk about the other feelings you've had. You've described it here that you felt anxious, you felt Mm -hmm. in your head, you (laughs) felt confused, you felt not Uh, enough sad, ashamed, Mm -hmm. right? Like all of that. So I think when you're trying to find someone new, it's not just thinking about that one feeling, it's the whole picture. And maybe you won't find someone that's as bold of initial spark, but Mm -hmm. the whole picture will actually be a lot brighter for you. Mm -hmm. So can you start to look at it in a different way so you're not mm-hmm. comparing every person to this feeling unless you just want to recreate these month and a half long microwave relationships over and over <laughs> again that start yeah. off hot and fizzle real fast? And, okay, there is another question that I think it comes up. Like, so all of this spark relationship, is it turns to be microwave or is it like turns out to be like great relationship? Oh, that's a very good question. I think it varies. I think it honestly varies. I've heard of people who have an initial spark in the beginning. It becomes a microwave relationship. And then they're apart for years so they can grow up and then they get back together. Or relationships that have the initial spark and then it the spark only carries them for so long. And then they start resenting each other because they're like, where the fuck did the spark go? Let's get the spark back. <laughs> so I think the spark is like the third character in this relationship that mm-hmm. doesn't deserve to be in this threesome. We don't need to put all of our energy on this spark when the energy should mm-hmm. be a- around you and this other person. The spark is just a third character. Get rid of it. it does not need to be a star in your movie at all. I see. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's where I'm mixed on the spark because I do think there needs to be some like oomph and connection, right? right? Yes. Like going on a first date, like seeing someone that you are really attractive and you're just like, oh my God, this might be the one. Like, I feel like after after her, like I dated the girls that like they were so much beautiful than her, but like still nothing that feeling again. I think this feeling of they might be the one on date one, we have to expectation check on that. The reality is we just don't know if they're going to be the one. All we should be thinking about on date one is do I enjoy being in this person's presence? Mm -hmm. Am I having Mm -hmm. fun? Do they make Mm -hmm. me feel good about myself? Do I want to see them again? That's all we Mm -hmm. need to think about. So by projecting the future is just too much pressure for anyone. With the spark, I, I definitely think people that like have a spark can continue to have a healthy relationship but it can't be just the spark and there can't be the spark and then a zillion anxious feelings following the spark so i Mm -hmm. think it's less about the spark and more about just the total picture of how you feel with them and Mm -hmm. we've also seen people like you know that like each other enough want to date go on another date and then that spark continues to grow over time and Mm -hmm. i would say for you amir why cut yourself off Like, let yourself be open to either form. Mm -hmm. I would really just go into each date of, do I want to see this person again? And go from Mm -hmm. there. And less about, is there the spark? And is this person the one? Are they like the other person? And -hmm. just take it for what it what it really is. Yeah, I think so. Like, I I think like your comment was really helpful. Like, I should definitely 
don't look for a spark, I should also think about the other things that am I happy with this person or like the time that I spent. It was just like really great. I feel like it's really hard when you've felt that feeling. It's it's much easier said than done. It's like very yes. hard to snap mm-hmm. out of it and say, forget the spark. I'm just going to go by, you know, more sustainable feelings from now. It, nobody's that pragmatic. But I think what mm-hmm. this creates an opportunity is for you to go on these dates and ask the date, what, what are your opinions about the spark? Collect some data. Do some research. Ah. Like listen to what other people sure. think. Because... <laughs> On mm-hmm. these dates, we're so afraid to bring up these sort of conversations. We have the date review questions mm-hmm. and then we don't get to know each other better. Maybe just by even mm-hmm. asking this question, it will create a spark because it is such a different mm-hmm. way of approaching a date. Yeah, But don't talk about your past spark on the date. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> leave that <laughs> off. Let's I, leave, yeah. please. Well, like, <laughs> um, sometimes it comes to that. Like they were like, hey, like what is the... What is the what is your best date and stuff? So like when they ask, that's what I talk about. Like I talk about the spark, and when I talk about it, I give too much detail to, it and I shouldn't. But you can choose how to answer that question with anything mm-hmm. on a date. Yes, you can choose yes. what your best date could be. It could be an activity you did if you don't want to get into the nitty gritty details yeah, of yeah. a past mm-hmm. connection with someone else. Mm-hmm. You know, it yes. could be like, <laughs> what's a great date? What I'm having right now with you. Like, you don't need to go into the whole past. I think yeah. the past should really be avoided, especially on date one. I think oh down gosh, the yes. line, you can mm-hmm. definitely bring up the past to help as a way to get to know someone and where they came from and who they are. <laughs> but on the first date, the worst thing to be on a date is to hear about someone else's past dates. Can I ask another question? Like, okay, when you talk about the, like the past, isn't it tells you like, like what kind of person they are in the relationship not in that detail I, not <laughs> in that detail i don't think it needs okay. to be that detailed i think your past can be summed up as i was in a short term micro microwave relationship and oh, they'll yeah. be like ooh what's yeah. a microwave yeah. relationship and then you could tell them and you'll <laughs> sound really cool cuz you have a new term uh, that was really intense and it helped me learn that i can have really deep feelings for someone yeah like something like mm-hmm. that. I don't think you need to go into detail of like, oh, we hung out a lot the first week and then it died. I like nobody needs to know all of that. And also that doesn't give me any, mm-hmm. any information about who you are. Oh, okay. No, I would definitely not be thinking like, oh, Amir would make a great boyfriend because yeah. he's talking about some other girl he's been with. I would be like, he's not over his yeah. ex is what right. I'm thinking. Yeah, that's yeah. major yeah. red flags. I would have been like, <laughs> check, please. <laughs> yes. So, okay, that's a good segue then. So coming out of this, now that we're ha- mm-hmm. having this conversation, what do you think you did learn from this microwave relationship? What I learned? Um, really, I don't, I don't have the answer. I think what I learned is um, I feel like there should be definitely chemistry. That's the one thing that I feel like it will work. Like there should be like similar interests, if I will say. And then I feel like the other thing will be like maybe like the things that they value other than else what i learned um i feel like also like don't give up too easy like like if you're feeling something super strong just keep it yourself don't be like open book like this was hurtful because like i was so open that's interesting Yeah, those weren't the takeaways that I would have (laughs) gotten from your story, Mm -hmm. simply because I feel like what I learned from your story is that you can't convince someone to like you back or feel the same intensity. So that's already information about that person really early on. I feel like I would learn to be an open book, especially in the beginning stages, because that gives them information. And how they react gives you information. And if I find out the person I feel so intensely about does not feel the same way about me, then I know we're not on the same page. I'm not going to waste my effort trying to convince that person. There's no point in that. When I was in my microwave relationship, I just kept thinking, if I hold back for one more day, then I get to spend one more day with him. You know, everything was Mm -hmm. worth that one more day with this person. Mm -hmm. But when I look Mm -hmm. back, I could have cut that off in the first month and had a whole month and a half to myself working on myself than trying to figure out if I can get this person on the same page. That is time and energy Mm -hmm. wasted. So Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm always, I almost feel like I have the opposite takeaways from from your story. (laughs) 
<laughs> I think so. Yeah. I mean, your takeaways is much much better than mine. Definitely. Oh no no no! I, you're yeah. you're very hard on yourself. I think that's <laughs> exactly that's what I was gonna say. I think this is a learning opportunity. This mm-hmm. whole thing, if we can look at it, what do I learn? That this is an opportunity to shed light into you know some of the work that maybe that you need to do, and mm-hmm. that's not everyone needs to do work. So it's nothing like you know personal for you, but yeah, you're so hard on yourself with this. Mm-hmm. Like at the end of the day, you want to find someone that can see you for who you are, the amazing mm-hmm. person that you are that we see. Mm-hmm. And And how can you change the mindset of if I did X, Y, and Z differently, this person would like me to, if this person doesn't see me for who I am, then I don't like them. And Mm -hmm. I think that really puts you in the control and the driver's seat of dating opposed to waiting or trying to convince someone to like Mm -hmm. you. I think that it's good that you said your feelings at the Mm -hmm. end, but I wish you framed it in a different way. I wish you said, and maybe this is a learning, is how can we Texting does not mean that we're communicating. Yes. I think sometimes, especially when it comes to matters of the heart, texting mm-hmm. is the worst method of communication. I think so. And I think also it's like there's why am I sending this message at the end of the day? By I, I mean, honestly, I'm thinking about like what I would do if I got this like huge message of how much this person liked me, mm-hmm. how much feelings they had for me. And then at the mm-hmm. end was like best of luck and not really giving you an opportunity to mm-hmm. even have that conversation. Like you could have got the same closure by s- reaching out to them and saying like, hey, I've been thinking about this a lot. There's a lot of things that I wish I said to you. Mm-hmm. Would you be open to doing a phone call or meeting for coffee? And then mm-hmm. having that as a heartfelt conversation. Mm-hmm. And if they don't respond, they don't respond. You get the same closure than if you dump all that out and give mm-hmm. them no exit anyways. But I think we yeah. need to really think about like, why are we communicating at the end of the day? So mm-hmm. I think my biggest takeaway is like, how can we start to do things with intention? Mm-hmm. And how can we use micro relationships to teach us for the future so we don't keep getting into micro relationships? or sorry microwave relationships how can we how can we it could be micro relationships too that also works doesn't Um, sound as good it's like no it's like how can we learn for i think learn the most important thing with dating in Mm -hmm. my opinion is learning it's so with every experience even if it's not a good experience i look at it as a win if you can learn something from it. If you don't get into another situation and the same exact thing happens Mm -hmm. again, that's when it becomes insanity when you repeat the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. As long as you're learning and growing and each relationship is building on one another to get Mm -hmm. you closer to ultimately what you desire, which is a reciprocal partnership for most of us. We don't want Mm -hmm. these one-sided situationships at the end of the day. So Mm -hmm. I think micro-relationships are good good in the sense that they're giving us some relationship experience still. Still Mm -hmm. better to be out there than to not be doing anything. But Mm -hmm. how can we learn from them and not get into a cycle of microwave relationships? Mm -hmm. And the other takeaway I had too is we got to stop viewing someone not reciprocating feelings as rejection. And rejection makes it personal. It makes it feel like you did something wrong. You did nothing wrong in this case. Mm -hmm. All you did was communicate to someone that Mm -hmm. you had feelings for them. And if they can't meet that, then they're not the right person for you. And I I don't want you to walk away from this saying that you need to hold back and you need to not mm-hmm. like you know be authentic in how you feel. I think the right person will see that and eventually be okay with that. Maybe you could say like I'll pace relationships a little better that I am not, you know, putting all my stock in the relationship from day 1 and letting it grow a bit more organically. That's mm-hmm. a way you could pace yourself but not hold back. I'd rather take chances mm-hmm. than not take any chances because I I think when you take chances, inevitably something is going to s- stick. Mm-hmm. I know I know. for me personally, I was getting rejected left and right, it felt like, before I met my current partner. But I looked mm-hmm. at it as 
this is a moment of my dating life that I'm actually taking risks. Mm -hmm. And I think it's easy to do nothing and to not take those chances and yet feels better for your ego. But what Mm -hmm. is that ultimately getting you? So take that risk, but don't view it as a personal attack. It's not. It's simply someone making room for someone that's better suited for you. Yep. Like, I feel like when you ask me that question, hey, like, what did you learn about this relationship? I feel like I never ever look at it that way. Now, mm. like, I, I think about it, I'm like, oh, my God, yes, like, I should definitely what I learn and things like that. I should definitely look at it that way that I can mm-hmm. I can focus on, I don't know, my next relationship, like in a different way. Yeah. That's great. Instead of trying to replicate this, how can you learn and then grow the next one? And grow the next one. Yes, I totally agree. That's key because we think about these microwave relationships as things we bounce from quickly when in reality, we need the time to learn from them. I think the reason why you seem so defeated right now is because Mm -hmm. you haven't spent the time to process this microwave relationship yet. And you're also building on the shame of saying, oh, it's been six months or it was only two and a half months. And you're just building on more of that guilt of, oh, I Mm -hmm. really need to get past this versus taking the time to process and allow you. Mm -hmm. give yourself that care to do that because you deserve Mm -hmm. to do that. I think the, the key measurement of a good relationship or even starting out is Mm -hmm. if you feel something about somebody, the first person Mm -hmm. you want to tell is that person. (laughs) If your first inclination is to talk to a friend, a family member, a therapist, Mm -hmm. there is something Mm -hmm. there because you're afraid to tell this person something or communicate your true feelings. So if you feel like there's nothing more lonely than being with somebody and not telling them exactly how you feel. That is a very lonely place to be. So when you start feeling that, that is a clue that something may not be most Mm -hmm. healthy. And I think what Julie said earlier on was making a list of the feelings that this person has made you felt is a good way to journal too. Sure, she made Mm -hmm. you feel alive and the spark and this and that and excited. But then let's list out everything you're currently feel. Yeah. And then when you see it mm-hmm. on paper, Amir, it's like, oh my gosh, your mind will be blown <laughs> because all of the negative feelings will eventually outnumber the positive feelings. Mm-hmm. And that will help you visually get over this person. I will do that after this Yeah, yeah. (laughs) That's a great exercise for you. And then one final thought for you is this. There is someone right for you. This person was not right for you. So the sooner you can set them free, the faster you can both go find someone who's right for you. By you hanging on to this past relationship, it is very Mm -hmm. unfair for the current person you're seeing, the next person you're going to date, all the people you're dating, even the people you were dating while you were seeing her because the therapist told you to see (laughs) multiple people. That is so unfair to all the roadkill out there who are just, what are they there for? There's placeholders. So think about that too, because you're also doing someone else a favor by processing this relationship. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need to slow down to speed up. And that could be taking a break from dating until Mm -hmm. you are in a place to view people as a new person you're going to be, not do I have the same spark and feeling as I did with this other person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You were like, how long did it take you to like kind of like get over with your spark? I never processed it. So it took me like five years. Honestly, five years. Five years. I wow. kept chasing it. I never processed it. Mm. To me, I was, I just kept thinking, oh, if I could feel that way again, you know, if I right? could feel that way exactly. again. Yes. And once yes. I processed it, flush it out of my system, now I think back, oh my goodness, I wasted five years of my life <laughs> trying to process this. Because what, you know, what ultimately happened, I don't know if you mm-hmm. have heard the story on previous episodes, was a few years later after we had, you know, end of things, he reached mm-hmm. out to me again and we hung out and and had a makeout okay. sesh and I felt the intensity mm-hmm. again and I professed mm-hmm. everything to him. It was verbal diarrhea. Oh, the last few okay. years has been so lonely mm-hmm. without you. I feel this and that about you. He was in such shock. He's like, I can't spend any more time tonight with you. He went mm-hmm. home and wrote me an email saying, I do not feel the same way about you. And it just just not right oh. for me to keep seeing you. After oh, those, this was one night. You don't want oh. that to happen because that's exactly what could happen. The intensity is not matched. And then what happens? Mm-hmm. You just get more hurt. Yeah. Then I moved to Beijing. So that really helped. <laughs> I moved to- <laughs> 
I moved out of the country. So you just have to move to another country, <laughs> then you'll be all set. <laughs> I think, though, this is why we wanted to have this topic, though, is that we've all been there, whether you're in it now or you've had it in the past. And I think if you've had it in the past, when you're actually in a reciprocal relationship, you can see how much time you wasted with someone that, quite frankly, is insignificant. But when you're in the thick of it, it is hard to get through it. So... Like UA said, the sooner you can see it for what it is and not hold other people to the same standard, because why would you want to recreate this? And right. having that outlook, the sooner it would set you free to find someone that matches your energy. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, thank you so much for yeah, getting vulnerable you. with us, getting real. I mean, so many people are probably nodding their head listening yes. to this right now because they probably are like, this is exactly what I'm going through. <laughs> yeah. Hope <laughs> you do that yeah. journal exercise and get a little bit more clarity around mm -hmm. this. I will do it today, tonight. I will just write everything <laughs> down and see what happens. <laughs> Go journal away. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much for coming on our show. Really appreciate the open conversation. And for all of our thank listeners, so this is why we created the podcast in the first place was to create a safe forum for us to discuss these what, what I don't know, society thinks is just like nothing, you know, they, the society mm -hmm. kind of minimi minimizes these short term microwave relationships as hookups or situationships when they could ultimately really impact your adult dating life <laughs> and the quality mm -hmm. of your dating life. So I'm glad that we can have this discussion. And for anybody who wants to share their journey, this is the forum to do it. And we want to provide that safe environment for you all to share. And uh, another great environment to share is Apple Podcasts. If you can share five-star <laughs> reviews about us and maybe a, a little note about why you love us, that is also great feedback for us. And it does help us give you better content, book better sponsors, book better guests, all of it just keeps helping us improve our content. And with that said, we're going to wrap up this episode. Date Datable. Datable. The Datable Podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. Want to continue the conversation? First, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter with the handle at Datable Podcast. Tag us in any post with the hashtag stay dateable and trust us, we look at all of those posts. Then head over to our website, datablepodcast.com. There you'll find all the episodes as well as articles, videos, and our coaching service with vetted industry experts. You can also find our premium Y series where we dissect, analyze, and offer solutions to some of the most common dating conundrums. We're also downloadable for free on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Overcast, Stitcher Radio, and other podcast platforms. Your feedback is valuable to us, so don't forget to leave us a review. And most importantly, remember to stay dateable. Mm -hmm.